Hey guys, Miss Ross here to teach super kids for our fourth week of remote learning. So if you remember correctly, this is where it shows you um, the super kid lessons for each week in your packet. And last week we ended on unit 22, lesson three, which is 28 and 29 in this book. So your K, Q, and J book, page 29 is where you ended off last week. We're gonna finish up this book and start the next one this week. So you're gonna start on page 30 of your K, Q, and J book today, page 30. All right, so let's get started. All right, so if we look on page 30, it has some poems on it, and these are about Jack and Jill. So what I want you to do first is try to read these poems without my help. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put my little mouse pointer under each word. I want you to try to sound those words out, and then we'll do them together. So let's try it. All right, let's read that first page together. So, quick, said Jack. Quick, said Jill. Let's get the bucket to the top of the hill. Okay, so what you're gonna do is, you're gonna look at your pictures on page 31. Let me just get this bigger. Okay, we're gonna look at the pictures on 31. And each one of these pictures goes with one of the poems. So, we're going to cut out all of these pictures of Jack and Jill, like we always do, put them in a stack so we know where they are, and then we're going to match them to each picture. So remember, when you're cutting, to hold the, picture, hold the page out. Okay, remember, finger on bottom, thumb on top. Do not let the paper drop. Open, shut, open, shut. That's the way we cut, cut, cut. So cut all of these out. You might wanna pause the video right now so you can cut all of these out. And then we're gonna decide which one goes with each picture. All right, now we just read the first one. Quick, said Jack. Quick, said Jill. Let's get the bucket to the top of the hill. So, if we look at our pictures, which one do you think goes with that one? Are they at the top of the hill yet? No, they're about to go. So, this picture right here is the one you're gonna put on the first Part. So you're gonna put that one right here where it says quick said Jack, quick said Jill, let's get the bucket to the top of the hill. Glue that picture on to your paper and then listen for the next one. All right. Now, the next one I want you to try to read on your own. So let's try it. Watch my little pointer. Okay, let's read it together. Stop, said Jack. Stop, said Jill. The bucket is full and it will spill. All right, so let's think. 
Jack is saying, stop, stop, the bucket's full, it's gonna spill. Okay, now, look at these pictures. Which one do you think it is? Has it spilled already? Or is it spilling right now? This looks like they're already soaking wet from it spilling, so I don't think it's that one. And they haven't made it to the top yet, so I think it's gonna be this one. So put this picture of them with the bucket spilling a little bit. You're gonna glue that onto this page where it says stop said Jack. So Drew, this picture right here, you're gonna glue in right here on page 30. All right, once you've done that, you can go to our next page. All right, that is lesson four. That's our first lesson for the week. So if that's all you're doing for today, stop the video. And we're gonna move on to lesson five. All right, so for lesson five, we're gonna start out on the second page of our Jack and Jill story. We're gonna finish it up. So it says, let's read this part. Try it without me one time and then we'll do it together. Okay, let's read it. Help, said Jack. Help, said Jill, as the bucket fell to the bottom of the hill. All right, so after it spilled, all it got all over them and it's falling all the way down. So we already glued this picture as it was spilling. So what do they think they look like after it spilled? Oh, they're gonna be soaking wet. So let's glue this picture right here of them soaking wet on page 31, right above this part where it says, help said Jack. If you need to pause the video, you can do that. All right, now last part of the poem. I want you to try to read it on your own and then we'll read it together. So watch my pointer. Okay, let's read it together. Huff, said Jack. Huff, said Jill. Let's run back up to the top of the hill. So where is that well? All the way at the top of the hill. Do you see the picture of the well? Then they finally made it all the way up there? Right here. So this picture of the well, you're gonna glue above that second page on page 31. All right, now, once you've done that, we're gonna move on to our next one. All right, so we're gonna look at page 32. And this is what 32 looks like. Now, there's two words that describe one of the pictures and two words that describe the other picture. And we have to decide which one to draw a line to that it goes with, okay? So pictures are gonna help us out. So let's try to blend those first two words right here. <clears throat> All right, let's try it. D -er -i -p drip Drip, okay, we have drip. What's that next one? D, r, a, p, d, 
drop, drop. So we have the word drip, drop. Which one of these pictures goes with that, those two words? Is it the faucet that goes drip, drop, or the bunny that goes drip, drop? It's the faucet, like the sink. So you're gonna draw a line from drip, drop to the sink. All right, now let's look at the next two words. I bet you could blend those without my help, but we're gonna still do it together. Let's try it. Hip, hip, all right, hip. Next one, hop, hop. All right, what does it say? Hip, hop, does a bunny go hip, hop? It does, so you're gonna draw a line from hip, hop, to the bunny. All right, let's go to the next one. Let's blend this one. T -i -p tip. All right, we have tip and t -a -p top. Tip top. Now, does the fish go tip top or the mountain go tip top? <coughs> You're right, the mountain has a tip top. We learned about that with landforms. So draw a line from the words tip top to the tip top of the mountain. You can use a crayon or a pencil or whatever you have. All right, let's do the next one. All right, let's blend it. Flip, flip, flip. All right, we have flip and then flop, flop, flop. So we have flip, flop. Does a fish go flip, flop? It does. So draw a line from the words flip, flop to the fish. All right, the next one we're going to look at. Let's blend it. So Ip, slip, slip. All right, we have slip and then slop, 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 slip, slop. Are the feet going slip, slop, or is the horse going slip, slop? I think the feet are going slip slop, right? It looks like they're in some water and it's slippery, slip slop. So draw a line from slip slop to the feet. Let's read those last ones on the bottom. K -o -i -p clip. Clip. All right, we have clip. And the next word, k -o Clop, clop, clop. So we have clip, clop. Do you think that's what sound the horse makes when it's galloping? Clip, clop, clip, clop, clip, clop, right? So draw a line from clip, clop to the horse, and then you're done with that page. All right, here we go to the next page. This one, we're gonna practice our rhyming skills. We already talked about our rhyming skills that we've learned in Blue Book and how those are gonna help us with our rhyming. So let's look at this one. It gives us one word and picture and we have to decide which other picture rhymes with it. And then we have to write that word on the lines. So I want you to try and read that word without my help. Try to read it without my help and then we'll read it together. Did you get hen? Hope you did. Uh, mm, hen. Now, which one of these rhymes with hen? Does hen and fan rhyme? No. What about hen and pen? Yeah, hen and pen do rhyme. So what we're gonna have to do is segment, take apart that word pen and figure out how to spell it, all right? So 
pen. What do you hear at the beginning of pen? P, p. What makes that p sound? P. So you're going to write a lowercase p on the line under the head. Now, what do you hear in the middle? Remember, roller coasters help us with that middle sound. So, pen, pe, eh. Do you hear that? What's that sound? Eh. What letter makes the eh sound? E. So, write a lowercase e next to your lowercase p. All right, now we got to find the ending. The best way is to punch it out, so let's try it. Pen, pen, what do you hear? Mm. what letter makes the mm sound? I hope you know it's an N, so write an N at the end of that word. So you should have P-E-N. All right, let's move to the next one right here. This is a picture of a band. Ooh, this one might be a little tricky. A band. Now, what is this a picture of? A hand. Do band and hand rhyme? I think so, but let's look at the next one. Man. Band, man. So close to rhyming. You know why band and man don't rhyme? because of the ending sounds being different. The ending sound of band is band, right? In man, it's man, right? We have a d and a n. So can those rhyme? Nope, so it's gotta be hand. So now, hand has four letters, so we're gonna have to be really careful when we're segmenting and taking that word apart to write the word hand. So, easy part. First sound you hear in hand is what? <sighs> what makes the <sighs> sound? H. So, write that lowercase letter H at the beginning of your line, that lowercase H. All right, now what do you hear next? Ah, ah, ah. What makes that sound? A. So you're going to write an A. H A. Mm. Mm. What makes that sound? N. So you write a lowercase N and that ending sound. Hand. And what do you hear? D. What makes the d sound? D. Awesome. So you're going to write H A N D. And circle that hand because it rhymes with band. All right, when you're done with that one, we're going to move on to the next one. All right. That is a sack of potatoes. But the word that we're looking for is just sack. So, sack is going to rhyme with one of the two characters in our story. What were their names? Who was, what was his name? Jack and Jill. Remember, we had Jack and Jill went up the hill. Now, which one of those two names rhymes with the word sack? Does sack and Jack rhyme or sack and Jill rhyme? If you said sack and jack rhyme, you're correct. So we're gonna write the word jack. So what do you hear at the beginning of jack? J, j. What letter makes the j sound? J. Now, hold up, jack is a name. When you write your name, do you start with a lowercase letter or an uppercase letter? You're always gonna write your name with an uppercase capital letter starting out. So we wanna make sure we write Jack's name right. So do an uppercase capital J to start Jack's name out. 
right on this line underneath him. So write a capital J starting at that strawberry line under Jack. What do you hear next after J? J, A. Ah. What letter makes the A ah sound? A. A makes the A ah sound. So you're going to write the lowercase A next to that uppercase J. So you should have J and then a lowercase a. Now, this next part is tricky. And the only reason that Miss Ross knows the answer to this is because I know how to spell Jack's name. If you didn't know how to spell Jack's name and you just use one of the k sounding letters, that would be fine. But since I know how to spell his name, I'm gonna let you on, in on a secret. Jack spells his name with two letters together that make the same k sound. Do you know two letters that make the k sound? C and K. Just like sack has a C and K at the end, so does Jack's name. So you're going to write a CK at the end of Jack's name. So you're going to write J A C K. And when you're done with that, we're gonna move on to the next rhyming words. All right, so if you look right here, that is ham. All right, now, ham. We have ham, we have a hat, and we have some jam. Which two of those do you think rhyme? Is it ham and hat? or ham and jam? If you said ham and jam, you're right. So let's try to spell that word jam underneath that ham on our lines. What do you hear at the beginning of jam? J, j, j. Right, what letter makes the j sound? J. So you're going to write a lowercase j on the line. Now, I'm going to show you a fast way to finish this word. Do you know that sight word am? How do you spell the sight word am? You should know. A-M. Is that what you hear at the end of jam? J. Am. Jam. It works. So all we need to do is spell the word am, put it with our J sound, and it makes jam. So you wrote the J already. What's the next part you need to write? Am. A-M. So you're going to write that J-A-M. Make sure you circle that jam because you know it rhymes with ham. Once you've done that, we're going to go down to the next one. All right, now, man looks like she ran through a sprinkler or the rain. She got really wet. Okay, so we're looking for a word that rhymes with wet. Now, this looks like a plane, but it also, another name for a plane is jet. So that's the word we're gonna use today. So we have jet and then we have web. So do you think wet rhymes with jet or wet rhymes with web? Wet and jet, or wet and web? If you said jet, you are correct, because those have the same ending sound. Wet, jet. So we're going to write that word, jet, on the line underneath the jet. Circle that jet for me. What do you hear at the beginning of jet? J. What letter makes the j sound? J. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna write a lowercase j on your line. Now what do you hear in the middle of jet? J. Uh, what letter makes the a uh, sound? E. So you're gonna write an e next to that j. And then finally, our ending sound, let's punch it out. What do you hear at the end of jet? 
jet. T -t. What makes the t sound? T. So you're gonna write J E T for jet. Once you've done that, we're ready for our last one for today. All right. What does that look like to you? Can you read it? That's a jug. J -ug, jug. Now, does jug rhyme with bug or with pig? Jug and bug or jug and pig? If you said bug, you are correct. Jug, bug. Those rhyme. Jug, bug. So we're going to write the word bug. So let's segment it, take it apart. What do you hear at the beginning of bug? B, b. What makes the b sound? B. So you're going to write a lowercase b on the line under the bug. B. What do you hear in the middle of bug? B. Uh, what makes that sound? What makes the uh sound? What letter makes the uh sound? U. So you're going to write the U next to the B. So you have B, U. We're only missing one letter. What's the ending sound you hear in bug? Bug. Ooh, g. What makes the g sound? G. All right, so write that G next to your U. So you should have B, U, G. All right, once you've written those, you're done with this page. All right, and we're done with this lesson. So if you are just doing the second lesson today, you can stop the video. All right, now, that's all of our lessons for our K, Q, and J book. So, you're all done with this book. I would love for you to keep it so that you can read all of the stories in this book over and over again to your friends and your family and your stuffed animals and your pets to help you become better readers. So keep this book around so you can read all the stories in it. All right, now we're gonna start on our last, our last Super Kids book for the year. This is our X, Y, and Z book. So this is the book you're gonna do next. So get this book out and you're gonna write your name on the line. Remember, your name starts with a capital and then next letters are all lowercase. So your first letter is a capital and then all of the rest don't go past that vanilla line for your name. So write your name on that page of the, on that cover page. And then we're gonna get started with the rest of the work. Aren't you excited to hear the next song? All right. Okay, let's hear the song for X and Y. All right, listen attentively. <laughs> to choose from. Think of how to change that box. Shake your brains and use them. I will pick a box and fix it up in a way I want to. Pick a box and fix it up in a way I please. You can cut the box or paint the box. Fill it, paint it, trim it. Make that box a mystery Put a big surprise right in it. You can make your box extremely cool. But extraordinary. Extra super, extra fun, extra special. For everyone, I will be so fun and mix it up. Yeah. 
All right, that's our X and Y song for the week. All right, so let's look at this first page. Now, we're gonna listen to that song one more time and try to hear some of these sounds, all right? We're gonna start by listening for the X sound, which is X. And then we're gonna listen to Hot Rod give us some instructions at the end. So listen to the song one more time. Look and see if, listen and hear if you can see some of these in the song. You can step right up and get a bar. You have six to choose from. Think of how to change that box. Shake your brains and use them. All right, so he says we have six different boxes. Can you count them? One, two, three, four five, six. Now box ends with the x sound, which means box ends with an X. So listen and see if you can hear some more of those sounds. We'll pick a box and fix it up in a way I want to. Pick a box and fix it up in a way I please. You can't cut the box or paint the box. Fill it, bend it, swim it. Make that box a mystery box. Put a big surprise right in it. I will pick a box and fix it up any way I want to. Pick a box and fix it up any way I please. Did you hear that? Take a box and fix it up. The word fix also has that X sound in it. Keep listening. You can make your box extremely cool. Quite extraordinary. Extra super, extra fun, extra special. For everyone, I will pick a box and fix it up. All right, now we're gonna look at what Hot Rod says on this page. Let's read it together. Hot Rod said, let's fix up boxes. Can you find the letter X in that sentence? I see two letter X's in that sentence. Let's fix up boxes. The first one I see is in the word fix. Did you find it? The end of the word fix has the letter X. So I want you to underline that letter X at the end of fix. Do you see the next one? Fix up boxes. Now X in boxes is not at the beginning or the end. Can you see where it is? The middle. You see the middle of boxes? Boxes. Underline the X in the middle of boxes. Now in this next sentence, we're gonna look for the Y sound. Y makes the Y, Y sound. So we're gonna underline the Y in the next sentence. Let's see what it says. The super kid said, yes, yes, yes. Now I see three Y's in that sentence. Do you see them? They're at the beginning of the word, yes. I see one here, and here, and here. Underline all of those whys. All right. Now, let's listen to that X sound. X. 
Now we heard that sound in two words in that song. We heard it in fix and we heard it in box at the end of those two words. All right. Let's look at how to write that letter X. So we start at the strawberry for that capital. We go from the strawberry to the chocolate and then we go back to the strawberry. Strawberry to chocolate. Do you notice that that X crosses right on the vanilla line? That'll help you really remember where to cross your X. And then the lowercase is exactly the same as the uppercase, but you just don't pass that yellow line. All right, let's look at why. Now, when we're doing why, we almost pretty much make a V at the top of our line and then add a line at the bottom. So you're gonna make a V from strawberry to vanilla, vanilla to strawberry, make a little V. And then from the, that point of your V, you're gonna go from the vanilla to the chocolate. So you're gonna write your V and then add a little tail, but don't pass the chocolate. For lowercase y, you're gonna go past that chocolate line. You're gonna go from the vanilla, past the chocolate a little bit, and then cross only to the chocolate for that second one. Y is a little tricky, so it's gonna take us some work. So when we get to handwriting pages, really take your time to make your Y's look really great. All right, let's listen for the sound that Y makes, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the most common, the most common sound for Y is yeah. That means the one we're gonna hear most of the time. Yeah, like in yuck or yawn or yellow. But if you wanna challenge, there's a few other sounds that Y makes. So let's just listen to those as well. Yee, yee, yee. Sometimes you'll hear a e, e, e at the beginning, like yes or yellow, but you're always going to hear that y regardless. So don't let it trip you up. All right. That is our first lesson for Unit 23. So if you're just doing that lesson for today, you can stop the video. We have two more lessons. All right, let's look at lesson two. This is gonna be our handwriting. So, just like we practiced when I showed you the page for the X and the Y, you're going to do that again on this page. Now, you have two lines to practice your uppercase capital X's and two lines to practice lowercase, and then you practice together on one line. Let's read this sentence right here so we know what it says when we're writing it. Let's blend this first word. P, I, K, pick, it says pick. Oh, we know that next word. A, that's a sight word. Pick a b, ox, box, pick a box. Oh, it has a period. We have two sentences on this page. How exciting. Pick a box, period. What are we gonna do next? Fix. Fix. Ooh, we know those next two words. They're sight words. Fix it up. Period. So it says pick a box. Period. Fix it up. Period. That was in our song. Pick a box, fix it up. That was in our song about X and Y. So you're gonna write those two sentences on the line below. Don't just leave it blank. So once you've traced it once, write it again on that page. So pause the video so you can get your handwriting page done. All right, and that's our lesson for today. If you're just doing one lesson, you can stop the video for today. All right, our last lesson for this week is lesson three. So the first page we're gonna look at is page four. So turn to page four in your book. It looks just like this one. 
Now I see a sight word at the beginning of those boxes where Hot Rod is talking. Do you see it? You, it says you can fix up the boxes, kids. So it's gonna show us all of the boxes. What's that first word you see in the next sentence? You, so trace that you, Y, O, U, trace that with your pencil or your crayon. <clears throat> you get the gift box, Cass and Oswald. So they're gonna get the gift box. Do you see the gift box? Which one looks like a gift to you? Maybe the one with the bow on it? All right, so draw a line from that sentence to the gift box. All right, what's missing on this next line? That sight word, you. Write that word you. It says you get the, what is that? Egg box. Fritz and Top. Which one looks like an egg box? Have you seen eggs in the kind of box at your house? Do you see one of those? Ooh, it's this one. So draw a line from this sentence to the egg box. Now what's missing on this line? That sight word? You again. So write you again. Y-O-U. You get the Blanket, blanket box, the blanket box, Doc and Sal. Which one looks like it had a blanket in it? Hmm. Well, you see the one that kind of looks like it has clouds and a blanket? I bet there was a blanket in that box. So draw a line from that sentence to the blanket box. What's missing right here? That sight word, you. How do you spell it? Y-O-U, write that in this line, Y-O-U. It says you get the TV box, Alf and Edabetta. Which box is a TV box? Do you see a box that says TV? I do. All right, draw a line from that sentence to the TV box. All right, good job. All right, for our last page in this lesson, you're gonna turn to page five. So when you get there, listen attentively to the instructions. Super Kids Club, student book, unit 23, page five. Listen carefully and follow my directions. When you hear this sound, your teacher will pause this recording so you have time to mark your answer. Look at the picture of Cass and Oswald. Okay, Cass, let's get to work on this box. Do you have any ideas about what we can turn the gift box into? Well, right now it's just a doll looking gift box. I think the first thing we should do is to make it look different. You mean decorate the outside? Yeah. Maybe we could trim it with ribbons or put something on it. Yeah, let's put something pretty on top of the box. Then it won't look like a box at all. How about this quilt? It's a perfect decoration to put on the box. It'll cover the whole box and make it look like a table. Cass and Oswald have a quilt to put on the gift box. Put on. Circle the words put on. Okay, so look at Cass and Oswald. You're gonna look at these two sets of words and you're gonna circle the ones that say, put on. Now, both of them have that word on second. So we're looking for the word put. Do you think the pink word or red word is put or the blue word is put? Sound it out and circle the one you think says put on. We'll check your answers later. Now look at the picture of Edabetta and Alf. 
Alf, if you want my opinion, I think you and I got the very best box of all. The TV box is a great shape. Why, there are millions of things we could do with such a huge box. Like what, Annabetta? We can make a pretend mountain, or a model of the Empire State Building, or an Egyptian- Whoa, those ideas are super, Annabetta. But I think they're a little bit too super. I mean, I think they are too hard. Oh, I guess so. But I still think we can make something really great out, out of such a huge box. Me too. Why don't we cut it apart and open it and see just how big it is? Okay, let's cut up the side of the box. Edabetta and Alf are going to cut up the TV box. Cut up. Circle the words, cut up. Okay, so look at that picture of Edabetta and Alf. They're going to cut up the TV box. So you're gonna look at those pinkish red words and the blue words and decide which one says cut up. Now I see the word up in this color and this color. So we're looking for the word cut. Does this word say cut or this word? Circle the one you think says Cut up. We'll check your answers later. Now look at the picture of Fritz and Talk. Gee, Fritz, our box sure is odd. I know. What can we do with an empty egg box? Well, let's look at the egg box carefully. I say it's too small to cut up and make something out of. I think we should put stuff in the box. Yeah, see these 12 little cup-like spaces where the eggs used to be? We could fill those spaces up with something. Okay, let's fill up all the spaces in the egg box. Fritz and Talk are going to fill up the egg box. Fill up. Circle the words, fill up. Okay, look at that picture with the egg box that they have. Now, they're going to fill up their box. So we're looking for the word fill up. I see up on both sides. So do you think this word says fill or this word says fill? Sound it out. See which one you think says fill up. And we'll check your answers in just a minute. Now, look at the picture of Sal and Doc. Sal, I have a great idea for what we can make out of this blanket box. The only problem is that we really need extra cardboard to do it right. What's your idea, Doc? We can make a... Oh, that's a good idea. But you're right. We really do need extra cardboard to make that. Wait a minute. Look at this. If I lift up these flaps, we have the extra pieces we need. Yeah, we don't need anything extra. We can just lift up the sides of the blanket box and use them. Sal and Doc are going to lift up the flaps of the blanket box. Lift up. Circle the words lift up. Okay, now look at that blanket box. We're looking for the words lift up. You're gonna, they're gonna lift up the sides of that box. Now, I see the word lift on both sides. So we're looking for which one says lift up. Does this one say lift up? Or this one say lift up? Circle the one you think is correct and get ready to check your answers. Let's check your answers. You should have circled these words. Under Cass and Oswald, the red words put on. Under Edabetta and Alf, the red words cut up. Okay, so on that first line, you should have circled the red words put on and the red words cut up. If you've made a mistake, that's okay. 
Just go back and circle the red words put on and the red words cut up and listen for the next ones. Under Fritz and talk, the blue words fill up. Under Sal and Doc, the blue words lift up. <laughs> Okay, on the bottom you should have circled the blue words fill up and the blue words lift up. If you made a mistake, that's okay. Just go back and circle the blue words lift up and fill up. All right. So that is all of our lessons for this week. So if you got through all those lessons and you're done, for the week. Remember, you don't have to do all of these in one day. You definitely can if you would like to. If you have any questions or you're confused about anything from this week, feel free to send me an email and I will try to get back to you as soon as I can. You guys have a wonderful week.